And our next uh, speaker is Karsten Bauer, who will uh, talk about uh, pinning uh, threats uh, to CPU cores. Let's welcome the speaker. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Carsten Bauer. I work for the Paderborn Center for Parallel Computing in Germany. And uh, in my lightning talk, I'll talk about uh, pinning threats to Julia, my package threadpinning.jl that I created uh, basically out of necessity when uh, writing a physics code, like a Fonda Monte Carlo code, and there was no good option available. So that's why I'm here now. Uh, but first steps first, uh, why should you care? Like, uh, why should one pin threads? Um, at least there, are, there can be three reasons. Uh, one is it can uh, dramatically influence the, the performance of the application. I'll show an explicit uh, demonstration in a second. Um, it can be useful to reduce the noise and benchmarks. You have like more stable conditions overall. Uh, and thirdly, um, another talk that I, I gave a talk last year about liquid.gl, a package for hardware performance monitoring. Uh, and that package uh, really relies on threads running on certain cores because uh, with that tool, you uh, look at performance counters within a certain core to measure the number of flops and all kinds of interesting metrics. And if your threads would migrate around, you know, you would just uh, have to compensate for the migration or uh, just measure garbage. So um, those are three reasons. Uh, what is threadpending.gl? Again, it's a package I created to, to pin Julia threads systematically, interactively, uh, you'll see in an example in a second. But also, uh, while writing it, um, I, I realized that it would be nice to query and visualize the system first, right, so that you see what you're actually pinning to and if that's what you want. Uh, so that's another aspect of the, the package. Um, it can do many more things than just pinning the Julia threads. It can pin open blast threads. Uh, you can, it even checks whether your uh, thread setup makes sense, like that it's not completely you know, uh, sub-optimal. Sub, uh, and um, there's also tools in there to measure core to core latency, you know, generate some nice plots. Um, all came later. Uh, many more tools, that I can, uh, many more features that I can't mention here, uh, but feel free to uh, ask me about it later. There's one big limitation right now. I mean, not big for the audience. We just saw the, the, the Jujuya survey and the most used OS is Linux. So it works on Linux, but currently it only works on Linux. Um, and uh, sometimes for fundamental reasons. So macOS just doesn't allow you to properly pin threads. Uh, and Windows, there's a PR for it. Uh, I'll come to back to that later. Um, Right, so, but you might say, why create a tool for that? There are a couple of tools to, to pin threads, right? So, you know, I mentioned a bunch of here, task set, Numa CTL, liquid pin. Liquid pin is the, the first one I tried because it's part of this liquid tool set that I mentioned uh, a second ago. Um, and the problem there is, first of all, it's not interactive. I want to use these tools in classes for teaching and so on. So I want to do this out of a Jupyter notebook. I will play around, run the same code with different pinning schemes. Those tools work in a command line, so that's problem number one. But the most important problem is that they might not give you what you want or might not work with Julia. Uh, um, and that's mostly because Julia uh, spins up more than just your Julia user threads, but also some uh, you know, uh, signaling threads and, and uh, other blast threads and so on. So these tools don't know which threads you actually want to pin. Um, Right, I, I gave a task set example here. So in that case, it, it does the right thing. It sets the process affinity, so your code will only use the, the cores that you indicated. But some Julia threads might run on the same core twice. Uh, you know, they are not ordered, right? So you can't rely on that. Uh, and thread pinning will be a solution for that. There's one built-in tool that I want to mention, which is the Julia exclusive variable. You can set it to one. Uh, it gives you like this natural ordering, first thread to first core, second thread to second to core, or I should say CPU thread to be more precise. Um, it's good that we have that, but it's non-flexible. Uh, there's just one option. You set it to one or not, right? That's it. Uh, it doesn't visualize anything. Um, you don't know exactly what it's doing. So from the top of my head, I don't know if it includes hyper threads or not. Uh, so you know, it's, it's, not the, it's good that we have it, but we need more. And why do we need flexibility? I work in a HPC center, uh, and I know that uh, lots of people run uh, Julia on clusters, right? And this is just one example of systems um, that are just more complicated. They have a hierarchy to it, right? And um, you have to understand the hierarchy and address it if you want to write a uh, performant code. Um, so typically, it's dual socket systems, so two CPUs and one compute node. And if you zoom in, right? Uh, you have a core in there, like there are many cores, of course. Um, within the core, you might have two SMT threads, like hyper threads, right? Uh, then they are grouped up in, on a die, right? Eight cores of them, which share an L3 cache. And then you have a NUMA domain, like a memory domain. Uh, so there's lots of hierarchy to it, right? That you first have to understand, visualize, and then uh, utilize with your pinning. 
how can you use uh, uh, um, threadpinning.gl to pin your threads? There are three different levels. The first one is like the physical level where you just specify pin to these cores, right? You just give the core ID and then uh, there you go. Um, obviously, that's not the level that you typically want to work at, right? You, um, you want to work at a higher level. Um, the logical level um, is, is there for you to specify in a logical way. I want to run, so in that case, two threads on the first two uh, cores on the second socket and then uh, four, uh, cores four to five on the first NUMA domain or something, right? It's an arbitrary example, but it gives you this log logical abstraction for pinning threads. And lastly, we have this predefined stuff, which is good in most cases where you just say pin to cores or pin to NUMA domains or whatever. Um, there are also environmental variables and Julia preference options that you can use, uh, but that's a detail. So how does it look? Uh, so this is the visualization. If you run thread info, you get this visualization. In this case, it's a, a two CPU socket system. There's no systematic distribution of Julia threads. Uh, they are overlapping, in fact. And then we can use, you know, pin threads, cores. Everything is pinned to cores. Uh, pin to sockets, now it's pinned to, you know, in a round robin fashion to different uh, sockets. You can pin to NUMA domains, you can also visualize the NUMA domains. Um, you can all do this interactively in the REPL, in a Jupyter notebook, whatever. Um, here's a little, you know, benchmark. It's just an entirely memory bound operation, just a DexPy. Um, and uh, in some cases, for example, when you run with eight threads, uh, just by Changing the pinning, you get like an eight times performance uh, benefit because that system had eight NUMA domains. Um, you know, there's more intricate things to talk about here, but uh, this is a lightning talk, so I can't go into any details. Um, uh, real time, in a real application, uh, we saw something like 2.4 speed up. Um, one thing I want to mention is thread pinning only pins threads to cores, it doesn't pin tasks to threads, right? Julia has task-based multi-threading. So in my example, I used at, uh, at threads static to, to, to map that. Um, yeah, but that's a discussion for another talk. Uh, so thread pinning only pins threads. Um, we also have an option to just uh, sort of respect external affinity masks. So if you're running under uh, in a slurm allocation, for example, which might already you know, uh, set the right affinities. You can just write pin threads affinity mask in your code and it will in order, you know, respect that affinity mask and, and do hopefully the right thing. And uh, lastly, coming to an end, uh, what I'm not planning to add, um, for the one uh, MPI support, if you don't run in Slurm, like if you manually have not just one node, but multiple nodes, you don't, you know, have to count, separate the threads. We want to add features for that. There's an issue open. We want to pin GC threads, right? In, in 1.10, we now have GC, uh, uh, the garbage collector threads. We want to control them as well. Windows support, as I said, there's an open PR for it. And uh, I want you to help me out with it. First, I don't have a Windows machine. That uh, hampers development a lot. I mean, uh, what can I do? Uh, so if you care about Windows, reach out to me. Uh, halfway, uh, half of the work is already done. Uh, yeah, and uh, obviously feel out to reach out to me, uh, GitHub, here at JuliaCon, whatever other channel is out there. Thanks for the attention. Thank you for the talk. Do we have questions? Yeah. Very interesting. So, so when you make these decisions, you're combining your knowledge of both the task that is being performed and your knowledge of the nature of the hardware you're working with. What do you think the odds and obstacles are to starting to make these kinds of decisions? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point, right? Uh, I was talking to Valentin about a NUMA aware scheduler, right? That would like the, uh, utilize the, so that you don't have to pin your task exactly, but it would realize, oh, you are using memory uh, in a local way, right? How, how hot that would be or something, I don't know. I'm, you know, uh, but it's an interesting project and I would love to work with someone on that. Like it's exactly the direction I want to go because currently I'm coming from the HPC background where you do the manual thing, right? You just say, that thing has to run on, on core, whatever. But I would love to explore more the, the task-based nature of Julia and, and again, like a NUMA aware schedule or, or these things, yeah. But it's great to have the capability manually so that then at least Yes, it's a, it's a first start. I don't know who was first. So, uh. Uh, how do you um, benefit if you pin the threads but the task still sort of migrates thread to thread? Yeah. You still get the benefit of thread pinning. That was exciting before I came here, but I'm Well, excited. well, uh, the, like the generic answer, maybe, right? I mean, the, the problem is how do they migrate, right? If they migrate within a NUMA domain, uh, for the example that I made, right, the memory bound one, you would still, uh, uh, you know, be fine. 
Uh, but if they migrate like randomly across the cluster, no, you you would have uh, like it wouldn't help you at all. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that's the that's the point, right? Like this, this. I think it connects to the question we just had, right? Eventually, it would be cool if there's an option that uh, that the scheduler is aware of the hardware, at least some aspects of it. In that particular case, the, the memory structure, and then would migrate the threads in a limited way, right? Not just migrate them somewhere entirely else on a, a different socket, for example, but just migrate them within the NUMA domain or something. Um, yeah. But but currently, as far as I know, it just does whatever it wants, right? So. Yeah, so generically, you're screwed. <laughs> we have time for one last quick question. I, I yeah, think I Oliver think, uh, uh, had, had to, yeah. So thinking about like, using this in, in notebooks that I share with people and they yes. might not be on Linux, could we have it in a way that if you're on a non-supported OS, that it will not say, oh, this package can't be loaded here, but yes, it will not do anything? Great thing. Uh, I wanted to mention this on a different slide. So I have an option uh, for package authors where you can put a pin thread statement in your package, but you want to have this force false flag uh, because the user should be able to overwrite the pinning. Maybe you know uh, they know better than, than you. Uh, but they are currently the problem is exactly what you mentioned. Currently, you can install it in an environment, so that works. But if you don't using, it will just uh, you know complain. I, I want to change that, and it's super easy to change. I just uh, haven't done it yet. Yeah. Need to move to the next talk. Let's thank the speaker once again.